Right, Mr. Palmer here. Uh, video on capturing data. So this is in line in the little databases module uh, on uh, the point on selecting and capturing data for um, database systems. So the point of this video is basically to look at different methods of data capture, so you can identify the most appropriate data capture method for any given scenario. All right. So um, we got uh, manual data capture. Okay. So you would have a, usually in some most some situations well in some situations you'd have a manual data capture method in place. So for example, joining up this youth club, when you join the youth the form the youth club, you have to manually fill in this form. Okay. So then they obviously want to put this into their computer system, so they will use some kind of a forms fill interface. Okay. Forms fill interface is something like this: just a bunch of text boxes, drop down menus, uh, radio buttons, you know, check boxes, etc. That just need to be completed. As you enter the data of the system, basically with um, a forms fill interface where you have the person manually entering data, you need to make sure that the form layout on screen is as close to the paper layout as possible. Uh, that is obviously to ensure that um, data can be entered quickly and also that there are few errors in um, entering the data. You can also make sure that um, you got you got to ensure that the data that uh, that is entered can be processed so that means you use two things validation or input and and input sensitization use both techniques together okay so validation for members making sure the input is sensible and reasonable so that it can be processed validation does not ensure that the data is correct that can only be done by a human looking at the data so the different types of validation with things like range check value check type check format check check digits you can look them up yourself and you maybe fill in the gaps in the margins of what the different things are. <clears throat> then we've got input sanitization. That actually is modifying the input so that is valid. Okay. So that could be something like converting the case. So you someone might type in a mix of uppercase, lowercase, some people just type pure lowercase, some people type pure uppercase. You want to make sure that the data that you put in, for example, someone's searching for something in um, in your system. Then uh, it, you know you just convert everything to lowercase so that it can be um, passed quite easily. Just for a test, if you don't believe me, if you just go into Google and you start typing in the mix of upper and lowercase, you will see that the search uh, searches that it suggests for you will always be in lowercase. Uh, you can do other things, like for example, changing single quotes to double quotes, um, and you're removing what we call bad characters. This is all to do to do to pre prevent things like SQL injection attacks. And you often use you use sanitization and validation together to prepare the input for the system so that your system can't be broken while it's running. Okay. And now automatic data capture basically is capturing the data without the user having to enter data. So there's a range of devices that can be used to do that, obviously in conjunction with further further software process excuse me, so the further software processing. So you've got data logging. This is where you've got your sensors connected to a system. Um, now sensors basically continuously capture data. They don't stop. Okay. What happens is that you read the data at fixed intervals. So, for example, um, a thermostat in your house, you might act your, you know, your in your digital thermostat might actually only read the temperature every five minutes. Okay. Whereas the thermistor inside it is continually measuring the data. All right. Um, if it's storing the data on the device for downloading onto the computer system later. That's called data logging, because it's logging the data over a period of time, all right? Um, obviously, data needs to be converted to digital. Your thermostat in your house with a thermistor in it that is measuring the temperature in an analog form, that needs to be converted to digital so it can be processed by the computer. So uh, barcode scanners are a second method. Uh, here we have the numbers converted to a pattern of stripes. You can get barcode scanner, barcodes in a ver variety of different forms. I've even seen radial um, barcodes. Okay, um, the check digit basically used to validate that the number has been read in correctly, and they increase the speed and accuracy dramatically. Sainsbury's was the first supermarket in the UK to introduce uh, barcodes, uh, barcode scanning at checkouts in the 80s, and you know had a huge impact on their business. Uh, you know they they uh, conquered a huge section of the market just because they were processing things at the checkout so fast. Obviously, the downside of barcodes is that they're easily damaged. In line with barcodes, um, I've actually forgotten to put in QR codes. Um, that's worth looking up as well. Okay, uh, optical mark recognition. 
So basically, use the scanner to input um, characters. Um, it's very high speed, and the marks are meaningful based on the position. So this is an example of a betting card from Japan, similar to the lottery tickets that we have in the UK, where um, the marks are made on the piece of paper, and then that's fed into a scanner. Okay, what's important to remember with this is that the marks are meaningful based on their position. Okay, so it's where the mark is means that the, the that there is a there's particular date the mark the position of the mark gives meaning to the data that needs to be stored in the system. That's what I'm trying to say. All right. Now, optical character recognition is basically where you're using a camera or a scanner. Okay, so here's an example of some Thai language software. Where on the left hand side you can see the image from the scanner and on the right hand side you can see where characters have been recognized by the software and turned into a digital form on a computer that can then be edited um, that one looks like it's going to save it as a pdf document can be turned into like word processing documents etc text documents text files so you basically when it's scanned in the image of the characters compared to a library of characters and then the most appropriate match is substituted for the actual character in your in the document that you want. Um, a big um, use of this in the UK is ANPR, so that's automatic number plate recognition, where you now have the we don't have Rotax discs on cars anymore, for example, where the police just drive around and they just can see by the camera connected to their vehicle whether you have paid your Rotax or not. Okay. So cameras are used um, for automatic data capture in various forms. So you've got fingerprint recognition. So again, you've got a seamless sensor that takes an image of your fingerprint. Now, the, uh, there's variation in your fingertips. Okay, so minutiae. And in the UK, we use 16 points. We find 16 unique points um, on, the, on your fingerprint. And then those are um, scanned. And the algorithm basically generates a code from that. All right, like a hash algorithm. Um, so there's two stages, enrollment, where your fingerprint is taken, and those um, points where your um, the features of your fingerprint diverge are identified, and then the angles are plotted and the algorithm generates the numeric code, and then you've got verification, which is where you basically, um, you know, you put your fingerprint on it and it proves that you are who you say you are, all right? Um, you also got facial feature scanning and you got iris scanning. So um, facial features, you know, the, um, the police uh, have used this in various places where they scan pictures for um, people they're looking for, scan faces for people they're looking for um, in crowds, etc. Um, iris scanning. Um, so for airport, uh, we got the e-passports where you can zoom through check-in. So that's what I was scanning. And then like I talked about um, automatic number plate recognition. Uh, so speed cameras are another example where they are used, uh, again, for capturing data to go into a system. Now, magnetic in character recognition is something that is very um, uh, rare to see outside of banking. OK, so on the bottom of that example check, you can see over there, those are the magnetic ink um, Characters. So there's like iron, basically iron particles in the ink when it's printed, mixed into the ink, and then it's basically read by a magnetic ink character reader. So you can have a large number of checks in a stack, and then they just get one by one fed through the scanner. Okay. What about other text on the actual check itself? That's been written by hand, and so therefore this kind of use is quite limited in terms of um, it, the, the actual speed impact because the, all the other data on it needs to actually be inputted by a human. Uh, now, further use of magnetic material, you've got a magnetic stripe on the back of a uh, credit card or other cards, in fact. You, you see them in many places where you've got iron-based particles based on the stripe and the data is retrieved by swiping past the reader. So you see them in credit cards, ID cards, tickets, okay? So, um, you know, they basically... Uh, when you start working somewhere, for example, it might issue with a magnetic swipe ID card. Um, and all that is, is the, the, the device can write data into the magnetic stripe. Okay. Now, RFID is another um, radio frequency identification, another way of um, capturing data. So you've got the little um, chips in uh, various devices. So in your e-passport, uh, you have them in tags on clothing when you go to buy them from a shop. Um, inside parcels, inside your credit card for chip and pin. Okay, so you've got uh, an integrated circuit, two parts to it, and you've got an antenna. And you have active and passive tags. A passive tag 
uh, generate electricity by passing the RFID chip through a radio field, you know, magnetic um, waves, uh, sorry, magnetic field and a wire, moving a wire through magnetic field generates electricity, powers the, the chip, okay, some, some of them come with tiny little batteries on them, and then you also have passive, so you have active RFID chips which can broadcast the signal over quite large distances in fact, okay. Um, so you see them in Oyster cards, contactless payment, um, NFC is another form of technology that operates on similar lines, all right. Uh, now you've got voice recognition, oh, sorry, NFC can be used for similar means, I meant to say, okay. So voice recognition, um, input from the microphone, obviously it's an analog signal that's to be um, converted to digital. Uh, now this is a huge impact on disabled users, obviously because it can allow them a freedom of uh, life that um, other people can't. That they couldn't have previously okay so any recorded sound sound wave is compared with a library of sounds that already exist um, in the in the software um, and then obviously the closest match is um, selected obviously um, when you have natural language interfaces you have issues with things like dialects colloquialisms problems with two two and two am i going to somewhere is it too much or is it the number two all right obviously software is getting better and better at um, overcoming these kinds of issues. Um, there's the huge, there's a huge impact of background noise, illness, time of day. Uh, obviously, things like um, going to a cash machine on a, on a using voice recognition for a cash machine is a bit silly because on on for example on the high road, too much traffic. What happens if you're sick? You got sore throat, got a cold. Okay, when I wake up in the morning, I sound different because my voice box hasn't warmed up yet. Um, if you're thirsty, like I am now. <laughs> um, now, voice recognition system works better when you have, there is a smaller um, vocab in the system and there's a better masking of background noise. That's why they're quite popular for a lot of these telephone control systems now. For example, if you phone up the View Cinema and you try to make a, a booking um, for a film, it just asks you to talk to it and, you know, Virgin Trains or whatever it is, trying to book a train. So basically, um, you need to be able to th think about the most appropriate data capture method for a given scenario and how that would be used to capture data to go into uh, your system. All right. Uh, that was a whiz through of a whole bunch of different ones. The one I didn't cover are QR codes. Okay. Used to worth you looking that one up yourself.